Hello, and welcome to the Community IT Innovators Technology Topics Podcast, where we discuss nonprofit technology, cybersecurity, tech project implementation, strategic planning, and nonprofit IT careers. Find us at communityit.com. Hello, welcome to Community IT Voices. Uh, my name is Carolyn, and today I'm going to be interviewing Norwin, who is an IT business manager. So Norwin, would you like to introduce yourself and how long you've been at Community IT? Yeah, thank you, Carolyn, for the opportunity. Um, I'm Norwin Herrera, and I have been two years at Community IT. And uh, what is your job description? What, what do you do? What does an IT business manager do? Yeah, uh, you know, IT business manager is, is a it's a new term, information technology business manager, and I think it combines something like an IT manager with the IT director director um, to manage basically uh, to manage technology at uh, non at our clients. I would call it uh, in. What is this? It's, 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 I think it's a new term uh, introduced in this world of managed service providers. And that's what I basically I think it is. So on a typical day, uh, what sort of things do you do for the clients? Yeah, my daily routine usually starts with um, checkup of all my clients' tickets. And basically, I have a, I have a dashboard to see everything that is going on with my clients. Then obviously, you know, in this uh, connected world, uh, I read or reply emails. I'm, I'm very detail-oriented about that. So I, I check every single email and I don't like to have no, no read emails. So if I get 10 new emails, I have the temptation to go over every single one of them and I classify them. So that's what I do. I don't keep it in my inbox. I just have an email, reply to it if I need to. And if I need to do something, I flag it and I keep it until it's done and then I move it. So then I provide solution to my clients using all the resources that we have available. Uh, IT business manager is kind of very interesting position in the organization because you are like a magician and you have help from projects, you have help from help desk, you have help from engineers, pretty top engineers, you talk to sales, and then you have to, you know, coordinate with senior leadership. So basically you're playing with everybody every single day. And that's what is, what is my day like, you know, every single day it's about, uh, talking, coordinating, and providing solutions to, to clients. Do you have an IT background? I do. I am a, I study a, a computer engineering school in El Salvador. I'm from, originally I am from El Salvador uh, and I studied that in my country. And basically I studied that since college. And I have been in technology for, hmm, over like 24 years, basically, working as an employee in technology per se, I have been like uh, about 30 years. Um, but I, it sounds like the IT business manager role is slightly different from like a typical tech admin role. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about that and the fact that it's a new position uh, at Community IT and I think new in the industry as well? New in the industry, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry to, to interrupt you. <laughs> um, basically, it's, it's a, you know, it's a combination, as I said before, it's a combination between an IT director and an IT manager, if you want to call it as IT specialist. We, we do a little bit of everything in here. You know, we do budget, we do, we do uh, project management, we do basically, um, we do analysis. So we are analyze how is your organization in this moment? What is the best way to go? So we are like giving you advice. We're like an advisors 
to our clients. So it's it's a pretty interesting uh, pretty interesting position. N never bore. So it's always a new challenge every single day. So I I for me that's that's key. You know I can't as a person I cannot be in a in a position where I'm going to be doing the same thing over and over. So even though it's technology, even though it's uh, we provide advice, but it's never it's never the same because every single organization that we, we provide support is different. Um, so it's not, you, you just kind of answered my question about what are the best things about your job. Um, can, did you apply um, for the role of IT business manager? And do you remember why you applied and, and what made you think that that was a good fit? Yes, uh, 10 years ago, uh, about yeah, exactly 10 years ago, I was working at uh, La Clinica del Pueblo. Um, and La Clinica del Pueblo is one of the community IT clients. So I was the IT manager at La Clinica and I was interacting with community IT 10 years ago. Then I quit La Clinica and uh, years after, two years ago, I saw, um, I saw a post in Idealist, I think I found it. And I saw, oh, community is looking for IT business manager. And I thought that I was, I was exactly the person for that position. So I applied and here I am. <laughs> I knew about that. <laughs> yeah, community, one of the things that I like about community IT is their ethics at work and how they approach technology. So I will say that community IT is like the good side of the force. <laughs> if you want to speak about that, you know, it's like they are doing the best thing possible for the clients in this crazy world where you can find people that is not trying to give you the best advice, but just trying to get your, you know, your money, get some piece of you. In this case, it's not like that. Um, so many employees say that uh, joining community IT was a kind of serendipity moment. Uh, many people changed careers. It sounds like you have had a, quite a career in IT that has um, supported you in being able to do what you do as the IT business manager. Um, do you have any advice for students on uh, if they're planning to pursue a career in IT, what, what, we, what you would tell them to, to develop or, or do? Yeah, uh, when I read this, when I, I prepared for this question, I wrote down that like, I don't believe in miracles. So everything that I have done in the past prepare me to be here today. So here I am and I am enjoying this space of my life in community is like a reward for me, okay, from life. So in for the students, the only thing I can say is first find something that brings your heart into it okay so first you gotta make sure that you are enjoying every single day that of what you do in this case is technology okay so technology is a very broad uh term and you can be a graphic designer you can be a web developer you can be a developer itself you can be a help desk support you can be an engineer, you can be a network engineer, you can be an ITBM, you can be, you know, it's 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 a broad thing in 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 the in this environment. So you gotta find exactly what is your passion and stay there. Okay. Me personally, I never work for money. I work for what I like because otherwise I'm gonna be suffering every single day trying to accomplish a goal that is not that in real life is, is nothing, you know, it's money, it's, it helps, but it's not the main thing that makes you happy every day. So find that, make what it makes you happy every day and then go for it. The money will come, you know, that's, that will come. And then try to find a place that it makes you happy, basically. That's a great segue into another question I have, which is that, um, if you knew someone who was in a technology job or a nonprofit job um, that wasn't feeling supported, 
or that was having some difficulty finding their passion or finding what made them happy. Um, do you have some advice for them of where do you go for support or mentoring? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of a tricky question, but the, the, in, in, since it's a tricky question, it's not a simple answer, right? Uh, we, if you are in technology field and you're not feeling well, right? You're not feeling that you are advancing or the company you're working on is not giving you the opportunity to grow. For example, that's what the things, that's what happens in, sometimes in this field. Like you enter and help this, you stay forever and help us. But community, I mean, not only community, there's some organizations that helps you grow. So you can be in help this for two years, three years, get all the experience and knowledge, and then move on. You know, move on to the next level, move on to the next level. I mean, the minimum you can end up is being a CEO of a technology company, or you can be a, a manager in, a, in another company. So you will basically have all the experience that you're going to acquire, and then you're going to use it in one place. Uh, it's, it's, it's a life, maybe a life, a life, um, how do you say, a life uh, wisdom share that I have is um, speak out, you know, say what you feel, say what you have in your, in your head, in your heart, don't keep it to yourself. Uh, and that will lead you to the, to the way. I love it. That's great, <laughs> great wisdom. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I know that in technology careers, there are lots of different certifications and degrees that you can get. And while we're talking about careers and advancing, um, do you have any advice on ways that you can build your career um, in technology? Uh, I mean, university is one of them, right? University give you the, the basic in everything. But then you can choose. I mean, right now in this, uh, in this world is hundreds, thousands, millions of uh, training courses online. And then that depends on how, how, um, how focused you are and what you want. So my, my advice is set the, set the goals where you want to be and go for it, okay? Do not get frustrated in the way because life is not in a straight line. You know, life is, is a curve sometimes. Sometimes it's you're going high, up. Sometimes you're going down. It's, it's the way life goes. So it's the same thing in your career. I mean, you say you want to be a doctor or you want to be a, you know, master in something. It's not like a suddenly from today, the next day you're going to be a master or just because you started, you start, study a master degree, it makes you a master. That's not true. You know, you get a degree, a master degree, but you are not a master. You just get the fundamentals to be a master. And then the same thing in technology. Think about what you want. Set the goals. Don't get frustrated in the way and just keep moving, keep going. You know, you only have one life. So just keep going. That's, that's what I can say. I mean, the, the pandemic should have teach us something. So we need to learn that there is nothing more important than life. Okay, that's basic. So me, every day, kind of working our community is that. It's like, okay, let's open the computer. Let's see what it got today. And let's see how we can help because usually we, we ended up being helpers to people. You know, we provide a service and sometimes it's not a technologically solution. It's more like a moral support to our clients. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is a really funny story. Uh, a friend of mine said, you know what? I have a computer because when you say you are an IT, everybody asks you, how can you fix my computer? But I was going to do say that at the end, but it's a good opportunity to say now. So he said, my computer is not working. It's too slow. It's too slow. And then I keep clicking and clicking. I said, my friend, stop clicking because every single click that you do is stored in the memory of the computer. So the more clicks you do, the more it's going to take the computer to react. 
So my basic uh, uh, <laughs> consejo <laughs> to you is when the computer is uh, frozen, step out, go and get a coffee, talk to your colleagues around and come back. The computer will be fine. I don't know if I'm crazy, but our equipment works different based on our energy, okay? I might be crazy, but after 30 years working with computers, you can give me the same computer to me and the same computer to somebody else, the computer will work, will work different. Why is that? Our energy. Our energy impacts the way this uh, equipment works. <laughs> no, I, I totally believe that. <laughs> And, you know, um, on, on our social media, we have a campaign to remind people to reboot on the first of every month. I mean, some people like to do it every night, but um, at least once a month, you should be turning everything all the way off and turn everything all the way back on. And it just makes a huge difference yeah. in, in the energy, like you said. And, and that's you... why we have the weekends. That's why we have a weekend. A that's right. A weekend is a reboot of yourself. Reboot your spirit, re reboot your, you know, your energy. Come back on Monday fresh to start That's working right. again. Um, so I know that you are a Spanish speaker and we've talked um, previously about having Spanish language um, materials um, mm. for our clients and on our website. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about that. And you said earlier that we are helping our clients. Do you find that um, speaking two languages fluently is uh, helpful to you? Are, are there clients that it's uh, easier for them to tell you what the problem is in uh, Spanish? Uh, honestly, if I have a client that is a Spanish speaker, I try to approach them in Spanish. For some reason, we, you know, learning a language is, a, is like learning a new word. I mean, the whole, the entire society works in this language so we have to learn how to behave and how to engage with the community with the language so if i go if i found some that somebody that speaks spanish i try to address them in spanish because i feel more comfortable <laughs> and 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 for some reason it, it it does trigger something you know it's i don't know what it is but it triggers something it triggers like i know this guy from forever I mean, this is not true. Just by speaking the language, it helps a lot. So, and, and, and I feel, I mean, I feel very comfortable speaking in English with, with everybody though. <laughs> I just, when I came here to United States, I didn't speak English. So I, I study and I, I went to school and I learned the way to communicate, so. No, I think that that's just, um... If you think about a client who's having an incredibly stressful experience to begin with of something not working the way it's supposed to, and then you put an extra layer of trying to explain what that is um, in, a, in a different language, even one that that person may speak very well, there's so many technical terms or just the way you would think about it that's different. So being able to communicate, take that layer of stress off and be able to communicate more uh, clearly, I think is, is an advantage, especially if somebody is already under stress. <laughs> that is so true. And when I talk to my clients, I not only talk to about technology. I like to talk about food. I like to talk about the entire world. I like to talk about sports, you know, because then we are becoming robots and I'm not a robot. So I, I like to, to talk to my clients about different things. How are you feeling? I mean, my first question is, how are you feeling? I mean, are you doing okay? Everything is good. You know, that's my first question. I, I never go straight forward to, to technology. My first, very first question is, how are you doing? And then after that, then let's see what's going on. And we see what we can fix for you. You know, so we don't have the magic, the magic tool to fix your your, your, pro, your problems, but we're going to do our best to resolve it. There is always a way to find a solution. That's for sure. 
when when people ask you what you do, like you said earlier, when people find out you're in IT, they're always like, oh, my computer has a problem or you know, my iPad isn't working quite right. Um, when people ask you what community IT does, um, what do you tell them? What What's your short speech of, of what, what community IT does? Yeah, I tell them that community IT is, uh, it's got, it's got, I mean, I explained them the, 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 the word managed service provider. It's kind of complicated for them to, for people to understand. But what I said is that we are a bunch of IT guys. Sometimes I say IT geeks because some people have been in this company for more than 20 years. So we're not talking about people who doesn't know what they're doing. Here at Community IT, you have, I will say some of the top level people that knows technology. I'm not joking. I'm not bragging about it. It's because I know them and I know it is true. So I tell them there is a group of people, right? That knows a lot of technology and that we provide services to nonprofits. Okay. And uh, in addition to that, I explained that we don't do coding. So we don't develop anything. We just, we provide services like, you know, help this, we do projects, we implement projects, we migrate uh, email accounts, files. And one of the top things that we do here is SharePoint is one of the biggest one. Autopilot that we recently, because of the pandemic, started doing uh, in two years ago. And for me, it's a complete success. And then we are enforcing security is one of our top layers here. So we are enforcing multi-factor authentication. So we, we know exactly where to go. We know how to advise your company where is the best way to, to have a solution to your problem. So we do know. And, and we're not going to lie to you. And sometimes clients want uh, wants to hear what they want to hear, but in reality, that is not the answer. So the answer is we know this is the way. If you want to stay in the way that you want to be, it's fine. We're always going to provide you support, you know, but it will be easier if you do a little switch, you know, a little tweak. And we as ITVMs, our main responsibility is to help you to have finance, good finance in your, um, in your, in your IT resources so you can operate better. Because sometimes people forget that they need to have a line in the budget for technology improvement, okay? Technology is not a luxury. Technology is an asset in your company. Norwin, thank you so, so much for talking with me today. I really enjoyed our interview. Thank you for giving me the chance and the opportunity. I hope uh, people like the way I explain things, you know, you have different ways of doing and saying things. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Community IT does these free webinars and podcasts for our community, and we love sharing our knowledge and experience. If you have more questions or are having trouble with your IT at your nonprofit, please get in touch with us on our website, www.communityit.com, so we can start a conversation or schedule an assessment. Downloading any of our free resources there will get you signed up for our webinar reminders, and you can attend our next webinar in real time and ask our experts your own questions. If you love podcasts, please subscribe and leave us a rating to help others find this leadership resource for nonprofits.